and uh, now if we get a set of points and we want to estimate like the correspondence between them and we want to compute this what we call the homography between these kind of two set of points and uh, we would like to look at the similar problem so we have the 2d homography which actually we have set of points xi and their correspondence point and we know which one corresponds to which one and we want to compute the 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 h the matrix the transformation or if we have to look if we have 3d world projected into a 2d image and we know the correspondence between the the points we want to do what we call the projection to projection matrix and it's the similar way, which is pretty much we have an X point and we want the, their projection. We have also similar problem, which is what we call the, uh, the uh, fundamental matrix, which is also will be mapping between a point and their corresponding point, but it has different writing. This is why we want to compute the, uh, the uh, correspondence or the pretty much the trifocal tensor, which is exactly similar that if we have set of points and we want their correspondence. So pretty much we will look into these like three problems, four problems, which are a lot of similarity between them. If we look at the first and the second point, they are pretty much very close. The third point is also very similar. And in this like a lecture, I'm going to concentrate in the computing the homography, but Pretty much, if you think about the 3D projection and homography is very similar because it is mean, which is I only can maybe kind of detect the 3D representation to the DT up to something like constant like factor, which is the Z value along kind of what we call the homogeneous coordinates. But for like make it kind of simple in this course, we, we assume we have a set of points and their correspondence, and we want, why this is not moving? It's stuck. The second one, yeah. So if we are looking at this, pretty much we want to get, we have a set of points, x, y, and 1, if we assume that the uh, homogeneous coordinates, and for simplicity, let us assume the w in this case will be 1. What we are looking for, the matrix h, which is in this case, which should be, to be able to give us the transformation, which is the point x prime, y prime. We added the factor, just lambda here, just to make sure that this equation is up to scale factor. The homography is up to scale factor. It's not really accurate value, which is mean we know that this value corresponds to this value, but if I transfer x at this point x to x prime, I will not get the same vector i'll get the same va the same direction of the vector but they are not in the same value this is what we call the they are equal 
but they are not e exactly, they are not really identical in this term because this is the transformation is up to scale factor. So, but if we look at this, we know that we have three by three, we have eight degrees of, we have, we're supposed to get nine degrees of freedom, but practically since this is up to a scale factor, we can always, if we assume that H33 is not zero and we divide by this value, we'll get all the matrix, we'll get practically a uh, eight degrees of a freedom. If we have eight degrees of freedom, that in, if we have, Four exact measures will be able to solve this very easy. This is one of the, the issues, but practically it is not always the case that we have four exact solution. We often, we have two problems. One, since we cannot really in, 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 in practical uh, or actual life be, get exact correspondence and exact measures because we measure in, in, in real life, we measure in images. And what we will get, we will get set of points, which is we will maybe have the luxury to have more than one than four points. This is one thing. But these four points, the, these many points are not exact measurement, which is they include noise. And they, they, uh, they are not accurate enough. So one possible to carry out the solution is to try to find a, like one possibility is to try to find a four points, compute the homography, and then see how much this is far from the other points. Yes, this is, will be one solution. But for this solution, I need to pick the best four points or the most accurate four points. But I don't need to know which four points are the accurate one. So I cannot really do this in terms of getting the best four points because I don't know which four points. So one thing which is will be to try to get kind of every time measurement first in order to get which really the transformation that will minimize some distance function, which is mean it, if I, one, 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 one approach, if I take these ideal four points, which is I, I know that they are correct, this is, will be kind of fine, but is, I don't know which one are the correct four points. So one approach, which is, will be, is to try to find the transformation that will take any four points and transfer them into, correspond, into, into, into their corresponding points. But I want to minimize something. I want to measure how accurate this. One option is every time I take these four points and define kind of a cost function, which is mean how accurate the transformation I already computed. The accuracy will be depends in the kind of a measure which is between each point and the computed cores corresponding, corresponding point, if I'm trying to get So I have these many points here. I have, so let us assume this is, this is xi, sorry, not, not like as a value, as a vector. And this is here, we'll have xi prime. So I have it, one thing which is after the compute of the correspondence, these points, let us assume they correspond exactly to this one. After applying the transformation H, which is I computed in some way, I will not get these, the transformation supposed to be, which is as we looked in the, the X I H should give us X A I prime. But when computing this, I will not get these X I prime. I'll get something X, yeah, and these points which will be Somewhere, some of them will be exact, some of them will be near, some of them. So how I'm going to measure this H, which is I compute, how good it is. So I can compute not only as the exact case one H, I'll be able to compute many H's. Let us call them H I, which is H zero to H K. So which one I will pick? Which one will be the good? transformation. If 
I cannot really average these edges. This is one of the things which is because it's we know why we cannot average these because this is our the this is kind of like doesn't we, they are not really close under such an operation. So we may get something which is doesn't really give us the average point. Assuming um, we've got enough time, we could calculate the numerous h's so zero k for each set of four points. And then using eight group projective points that you didn't use the calculation, you calculate how far they are from the, the non points in x mm -hmm. and then take one of the smallest distance over all the group projective points. Okay, so this is this is actually very 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 good idea, and what we need in order to measure, which is good, we need some kind of a cost function here, which is how good we need to measure the goodness of these kind of like transferred points, which is one option will be to measure, for example, the distance between each two points, the point and their corresponding image, the, the image of their corresponding point and try to see the distance between them. This is one of the things which is we need. So we need to look for a way to do a measure the goodness of this, this result. Or the goodness will be measured in practically in two approaches. One will be geometric, which is will be geometric, which is will be will involve determining or involve computing the distance between point and the image of its corresponding point. Which is mean in this case I'll be able to compute the, for example, the average of these distances or the sum of these distances. So any measure will be, this is, will be the geometric. Now the other approach will be to try to compute the algebraic distance. Now the algebraic distance is easy to compute the geometric is intuitively easy to measure the distance. We know how really what we are measuring. Intuitively, it's, it's easy to, to comprehend in terms of like the, 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 what it's really, what the value we are getting. Now, this is when one thing which is we need in order to be to measure the efficiency of each algorithm will be able to tell us this is the best the transformation you get. We need something to compared to. So one thing which is usually we call the optimal distance, which is mean the best case we can do. This is what we call the gold standard. That means better than this is the optimal case we'll call, or the optimal or the gold standard. The algorithm which is create this transformation that generate the gold standard results will be kind of the gold standard algorithm. Compared to it, we are going to measure like our algorithm. Now, here one of the things, which is we assume the gold standard algorithm, we don't care about its time. We, it will give us the best result, the optimal case. Usually, we will not really, why we, someone will use different algorithm than the gold standard algorithm? Faster. Could be it's faster. Or it's, you can do it, for example, you cannot do it in real time. Or it maybe requires something which is kind of more computation that we can afford in, in, in kind of in, 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 in some, some application, both in terms of time and in terms of memory. So in this case, we're always looking for algorithm, which is a kind of compromise. But we need to know how much we compromise, both in terms of efficiency. Like if we, we are going to say, yeah, we are going to compromise the accuracy to get kind of better, faster like results. You need to see how much accurate you are like getting, how much accuracy you are losing. This is what we want to know and to try to measure these algorithms. Now, so let us look at the first like algorithm, which is what we call the direct linear transformation, which is a pretty much we assume this is what we want to solve. We want to solve if we have the xi, the set of point xi, we assume we are looking for h that will create, satisfy all our transformation or, or the correspondence, which is mean we know what we know that for x we have the point which is x0 correspondence to x0 tag. We have x1 
correspond sorry ox span correspond to x1 tag until we have x k correspond to x k tag or prime so this is one one thing which is if we look at this transformation it's a little bit problematic to to solve this transformation because we what we are looking for for h is up to scale which is mean we cannot do this comparison which like what i mean we cannot do this comparison that if i take xi and this is these two values are not equal because we are looking for h up to scale not for like this is the the kind of like one will give us this identity which is mean the two vectors which is we may get will be this vector which is maybe x i and this is this vector will be maybe x i prime this is what does it mean so these these two vectors will be these two points will be corresponding to each other but actually if we take they are not identical in terms of identity between vectors so we only need they will be have the exact direction but they ha may have different magnitude we have actually seen this in a various problems in mathematics for example if we want to compare the tangent of at points we only care about the direction of the tangent and not the 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 value of the tangent sometimes so it depends what kind but often we look for the direction and not the exact value of the vector is that point is clear so how we are going to solve this we cannot really do exact equality so what the option we have if we have two vectors just we only need them to see that they are equal that they are having the same direction which operation will come to mind cross product the nice thing is about if we have these two vectors or two points what what's guaranteed that they are equal in direction will be xi cross xi prime should be zero which is this is make the the solution very easy now we can actually instead of writing this this is what we will get so we'll be able to write xi which is the sorry i i uh, definitely they are not the same so i missed it here so what we will get we know that this is the vector which is supposed to be the image what we will get this is the vector which is after the transformation they will not be equal as we said but they will have the same direction which is mean xi prime multiplied by the image which is will be h xi prime should be zero so this is now we need to solve for this so one thing which is let us simplify this just the by kind of looking into the multiplication of this this uh, two transformation now we try to solve this this is very easy this is will be one vector and this is will be one vector the cross product with them just kind of to refresh your memory it's not really hard thing but if i have x okay sorry let us call it uh, a b and c cross product u v yeah, or x y z x y z usually what we will do for example how i remember it i j k so we have a b c and x y z if i'm going to compute the determinant this is will give us in this case what this will give us if i take the i this is will be the x will give us b z minus c y and the same thing if this is will give us the a z minus 
should be the opposite because this is will be minus because this is will give us uh, cx. I'm just like minus az, and the other one will give us ax, ay, sorry, minus bx. This is the vector will be the cross product. So this is what we are going actually to write this now, but to simplify the multiplication of the matrix, we will take kind of the jth row of the matrix H, we'll, we'll call it H G T, which is mean now it's actually we'll, we'll look into the, the dot product of this row and the vector X. So if you're writing this, we can exactly write this as X I, we can write this as exactly as H1 transpose multiplied by xi, h2 transpose and h3 multiplied by x. Which is exactly the same way just to make it simple. And if we're looking now at this value, if we assume the xi, any vector of our vector will be xi prime, yi, and wi prime. Now we look at, we're looking at the homogeneous solution. In this case, this is why we take W in general. W could be one often, but in projective transformation, it's like we usually use this. And this is exactly, if I write this Xi prime multiply Hxi, this is exactly what I write there. This is, are the, the terms here. Just written instead of like in, like a, uh, in a row, just written in a column. That's, that's simple, it's actually maybe just look from, but if you play with it, it's really very, very simple. And this is what we know that this is the H J shell T X I is actual, if we take the transpose, we can actually do them the opposite. And if we do that, we can actually get into this matrix, which is, in this case will be simple, which is the simplicity is that will be the diagonal will be zero. And now we can solve for H1, H2, and H3, because exactly these, these values are known to us, and this is, this is what we need to solve for. One thing which is we realize that these are not all independent, these three rows are not independent. Why? Which is mean the, these rows are dependent, which is I can write one of these rows as a combination of the two others. We know that because here we take wi as in general wi, and this is, we know that this is, will be kind of a factor. If we take this as a one, we can always, this is because of the third, the third component of the vector is pretty much the homogeneous kind of component. And this is, if we take, we can, we can find that two vectors are combination, linear combination of the, of the uh, one is a linear combination of the other two. So let us, I'm just writing this completely in, in, in liking this in the top of this matrix to make it clear. So this is the AI, which is we have seen before multiplied by the matrix H, where H will be, this is kind of like each one of these H is a vector. And this is exactly the same H we have here. So we just write it in different ways. And this is the matrix which is, was the end of the slide before. So this is the linear system. But I mentioned that this linear system, this matrix is not of rank three, which is if I try to diagonalize it, I will get that two rows, one row is actually a linear combination of the other two. So if I simplify this, I will get or try to kind of like compute the rank of this, I will get this two by three matrix.
Is that clear? It's, it's clear why this is independent, yes? This, these, the three are dependent, yes? I can compute this as the sum of these two if I multiply this factor by the value, like multiply here by the opposite of this value and here by the opposite. So it's not really big or hard thing to see. So now this system we can solve by any solver, which is we see is either, either kind of analytically solve this or using kind of like a, any of these kind of like a technique to solve it. That's clear. So we have, this is the, the, the uh, linear system to solve. Okay, so this is what we saw. Now this is which will be kind of the, the issue which is more like a uh, important. The matrix which is we have A is actually eight by nine, or if we take into this numbers will be 12 by nine. And it's kind of like eventually if we simplify, this is all these metrics together because every point will contribute kind of this kind of these kind of, if we took it, each one of these is a vector and we have four points at least to be able to solve this. So which is, this is what we will get kind of, what we will get like Frank eight. And we'll get many solution because up to scale factor, which solution we will take. Practically, whatever solution you like we can take. For simplicity, we'll take the solution which is, will satisfy the norm, just the normalized solution, which is, the, the, uh, the uh, norma of H will be equal to one. Now this, is, this is will be easy to solve if we have eight points. So if we have now eight points, we can solve this exactly. If we have more than eight points, we need at each time to kind of like iteratively all the time refine our solution and minimize a cost function. So again, if we have eight solutions, eight, if, if we have four points, we have eight degrees of freedom and we are like, we'll be able to uh, solve it exactly up to scale factor. Which one we will get? We will get the one which norm is equal one. Because in the beginning we say the projective matrix is up to scale factor. Now if we have more than four points, and this is the algorithm we'll be able to cope with, is to try every time, if we have more than four points, this is the algorithm which is we, we can use. So one of the things which is, we'll try every time to compute the homography of the point, then refine our solution, check for the cost function, and iterate over these, these kind of values until we get the cost function we happy with. So this is, this is the, the solution for the algorithm. Now, how, which solution, or how to determine which solution we are happy with, this is what we will talk a little bit later. But if we are thinking about non-homogeneous solution, which is mean we take the third component W and kind of like throw it away, either taking W equal to zero or dividing by W to make it equal to one, in any case, we'll be able to give this value, like be able to see the same linear system. Just I make it kind of like solve, like make it kind of instead of looking into vector, and instead of looking into scalars, this is what we will have. This matrix will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns and two, and this is what we will be able to solve for H. In this case, we'll get H, the, the homogeneous coordinates. The problem with this solution is it doesn't work if H9 equal to zero because we assume H9, we normalized for H9, we divided by H9. Now, if H9 is, is zero, this, the, uh, the uh, inhomogeneous solution will not work. Not only it will not work, it's we have always this case when we going to divide by a value which is often in, in, in when kind of for numerical solutions, not only 
may, we may have the value H9 not zero, but very close to zero. So the computer will not give us division by zero, but our like solution will not be robust and actually will again like this, this uh, technique will fail. So this technique will fail if H9 equal to zero or H9 is close to zero. In any of these cases, we'll not be able to get a good solution. This is what we, just simple like explanation why, because if we take any point like x zero and take the line infinity and multiply it, we will get zero. This is will t tell us that this is, this is something which is really uh, cannot give, cannot provide the solution for h from such point. Now, what really the, if we say we need eight four points and four correspondence points to, to solve for h. Now, any four points will kind of like help us. Any four points will be, if take any four points and their correspondence will, will give us like a correct solution or will give us a valid solution. No, yes, because if we take, for example, let us assume like f among the four points, three are collinear. Now, if these three are collinear, for example, in the first case, if the correspondence point, sorry, this is supposed to be x prime, all these should be have a, uh, a prime in them. So this is something which is I need to correct. If this will give us a, the, the right in the first case will give us the four, the three collinear will give us another three collinears and another point which is not in the same line. That, that's fine because this is, we know that the, this is a projective transformation preserve collinearity, which is, but the point which is, for example, x3 could be written as a combination of x1 and x2 which is mean they are independent. So when we're trying to find the solution, the rank of our matrix will not be enough, which is mean will not have enough degrees of freedom to solve the problem. That means all the cases, which is we don't, we have degenerate cases where a point could be written as a correspondence of at least of other points in the input set, then we cannot really find a, the, the, uh, the solution. Solving the system will give us many, sometimes often infinite number of solution, which is will not be able to pinpoint which solution to pick. The other case, which is if we get the four points, three of them are collinear, but the results are not collinear. What's the problem with this? Can we solve in this case? Why? Exactly. So this is contradiction. The here. In the first case, we have infinite number of solution. In the other case, we don't have any solution that satisfies this within the projective space because the projective space preserve collinearity. Here, collinearity is not preserved. It just means there is no solution in the projective space. Is that clear? Okay. We can do line which is pretty much line, we know the, the duality between lines and points in the projective space is very easy to see, which is mean if we have four lines or four points, we'll be able to, uh, to solve for the, uh, at least to solve for the projective transformation. We also know like some, how many, like a line will provide a, uh, will satisfy one constraint and the same thing with the point. And in this case, sorry, line and point satisfy two because one will be in X and one will be in Y. And this is why four point will give us eight. If we look at the conic, will give us five, which is mean we can now, if we have a conic and three points uh, and two points like will be enough to provide a solution for projective transformation. Because conic will give us, will satisfy five concentrate, will give us, can be able to kind of satisfy five degrees of freedom among the eight 
Now we need another like three. Another three, a point or a line will give us two. And in order to give one, we cannot really have half a point. So we need to, to have at least another two points or two lines. Now when we definitely can use a mix. We can use lines and points and conics, but it's we need to watch out for independ or de independency when kind of mixing things. Because sometimes maybe we'll mix lines and points, but these lines and points, like eventually a point will be written as a, a linear combination of any other point, which is in this case will not be able to provide the minimum degrees of freedom or the minimum requirement to satisfy the eight degrees of freedom. So this is one thing, it's easy, it's possible to mix, but we need to watch out for dependence. Here is a case where we have two points and two lines. Eventually, this is what we will get. But this is exactly as we have actually five lines. But we said four lines are enough. Yes, four lines are enough, but if we think about these are not really independent, these points, because if we think about this, point could be written as a linear combination of the other points. Okay, and now let us return to the cost functions, which is we started kind of to talk about. So we say we have a algebraic error. We can measure, we can measure geometric error and we can measure reprojection error. Now, this is the two things, which, the three things we can easily like measure in order to determine which, how to lead the computation of the, our homography to get to minimize these errors. Our goal is to minimize these errors. So one thing which is we need, we can with algebraic distance we can easy comprom like do the comparison because it's pretty much multiplication of matrices, vectors and matrices. The geometric is easy to see, like to interpret because we see the distance between a point and the point and we can measure, for example, the Euclidean distance. Now then we will talk about what we call the Sampson error. So these things which is, so, if we're looking at the, a, the algebraic distance, so we, we said that since we have many points, the, the points we are trying to compute will not give us the exact location of the target point of their correspondence. For example, when I take x, x, i multiplied by h, it will not give me x, i, prime, it will give a point which is close to xi prime. So which is mean the ah will not give us a zero for all points. It will give us some value which is e for some points. Some points may give us zero, some points will give us other value. So the, this is what we call the vector which is we will get, which is ei, is the, the error between a point xi and its correspondence point xi prime. So this is what we will call the error we will get. So pretty much we can compute this as a multiplied by h. So if we now looking at the algebraic distance, we try to measure the distance, we can now think about like taking, this is the point xi prime, this is their correspondence, like corresponding point. If we take the h xi, this is, in the ideal case, they will give us xi prime, but it will give us some point, other point, which is not xi prime. So we need to measure the distance between the point we supposed to get and the point we get here. So if we take this kind of measuring the distance between these two points, this is what gives us the error. To make it kind of like clear, I have the point here x i, this is my x i, and I have the point x i prime. The point which is here will give me, 
This is the point which is xi multiplied by h. This is the point xi. So this is, this is what we call the error we are encountering. Is that clear? Now, the distance between these two will be the error. Now, how I'm going to measure this distance? We have many approaches or metrics to measure distance. We know Euclidean distance, for example. This is one of the, what other, like, other than Euclideans. There is a many, actually, techniques to, for example, Manhattan distance. We can measure other Malabanius distance. There is various, actually, a distance metrics have been developed and used to measure distance between points. But if we are looking at this as, we can write this as exactly the form going back to the form of the matrix. This is one option to, uh, this is how we perceive the algebraic error. So the algebraic error between two points x1 and x2 will be measured as x1 square plus x2 square. And this is where, where a will be a1, a2. This is, will be x1 cross x2. So if I have x1 and x2, two points, I compute the cross product between them. And after that, I ignore the third component. And this is how I'll measure the algebraic distance. Why we took this? Because we, w we say they are equal up to const up to scale value. In our computation, like the calculation of h, we took this into account. So this is why we are taking this kind of also again into account. So pretty much if we are going to compute the algebraic distance between each point what we have here, we will sum all the values of the algebraic distance for all the set of our points. Now in this case, these points are more than four. This is why, because we will get kind of like eventually some error because if they are four points will give us give us exact solution or like at least up to scale but exact here we need we'll counter some error so we have many points and this is we can write this as a one matrix so this is will be if we write we can always write this as kind of like in the matrix notation and this is what will give us the error the algebraic error Is that clear? OK, so this is, this is algebraic error, which is now the geometric distance is also one of the, the technique we, we also uh, use. Now, if you realize the, in the algebraic distance, we did not look into kind of like measures. We look in the value we're getting from the matrix, and from there we compute the error. So the error in the algebraic distance is pretty much completely from its name, it's, it's algebraic. It's this computation, the distance, and taking this value. And this value is pretty much measures how much these vectors are not aligned and give us kind of like a algebraic notation. It's not really geometric, kind of like clear to be able to measure distance and see in geometry how much this distance. Now, one thing which is, if we are looking into geometric distance is intuitively it's easy for us to understand. So we have the measured coordinate, we have the estimated coordinate, and we know the true coordinate we have in hand. So pretty much we make this distance between this, we can use as the, the distance between, here the D is the Euclidean distance we measure. So we measure the Euclidean distance between these two points for each pair of points. And we take actually the arg min, which is mean the minimum distance between, like the, the, the like if we measure the distance, we take the minimum 
one on the on the, uh, the the one with the minimum distance between them. Okay, we can use also symmetric, which is mean we measure the distance between. Our, in the next slide, we'll have a kind of like some a uh, explanation with this. So the the Error we take in the geometric error, we have one distance. We take this point and see what's this distance from it. Now, the symmetric, we take all the, this point and take its image and see how H will perform. We take H minus 1, the inverse of this transform, and see the error on the other side. So the symmetric take this error and this geometric error. So the one which is... One error will be in one side. This is the first one will be the error in one direction. The symmetric take the error in the two direction. One in H and one in H minus. And some of them for each one of our points. Okay, the reprojection error is pretty much very similar in its notation to actually to the to the uh, symmetric uh, error because if we think about this is the this is the point xi and this is the point which is supposed to be this projection the same as here we take the estimating point so the this is the symmetric is pretty much what we call the reprojection error And here what we will have, this is what I try to actually to write here. So we have one image and we have the corresponding, like the corresponding image. So we have two way. One is the D, which is, is the distance between the point and the projection back of X prime. And we have the D prime, which is the distance between the transformation of X and the, the, uh, the D prime. So this is what we have the difference between them. And pretty much this is what we call, like if we, th we think about these values, and the, if we think about combining these into, like one direction is h and h prime, this is what we will give here, we'll call this is x prime, this is the error we have there. And this is the error we have here, and this is we'll have the two values. It's pretty much the same measure here, what we'll call the reprojection. So clear the reprojection metric. So it's not really complicated. One, instead of projection to the one side, because we, we take the projection to, to the two sides, like take it from forward and backward to make sure that we, we have a kind of like a better approximation. Now, one thing which is if we think about these two a metric or two ways to measure the distance, one is the geometric and one is the algebraic. So pretty much the algebraic is easy to compute because it's pretty much the going for just kind of we have it's less complicated in terms of mathematical representation. It's, it's a linear in this case. And while the geometric is intuitively easy for us to understand and see, like, see what really, when we take small values, we near, this is mean that the points are closer. When we have larger value, the points are far, further from what we expect. So we have a clear intuition about the error we expect. When we are thinking about, like, the, the algebraic, it's the intuition is less because we're taking the, if you think about it, we took the, actually the square of the x plus the square of the y of the cross product of the two values. Now this is, if we minimize this, definitely we yes, may minimize the error. But we don't have really how much this error means in kind of like in the geometric aspect. So this is one of the things which is, trying to find a solution between kind of somewhere in the middle. So this is instead of like to use this space, this is what we have here, the, 
kind of like one explanation between, which is so difference between the geometric and the, so the geometric you have these values, which is actually give uh, the algebraic, where the geometric will give us this direct values. So it's not always kind of like easy from these two values to measure the, that how the goodness or the accuracy of the algorithm. But for the algebraic, it is simple way to to try to get the uh, the uh, the computation of the solution. So this is in order to get. There was a technique which is in, suggested by a uh, Samson, and which is we call the Samson error, which is try to a uh, find the which is compromise between the algebraic and the geometric solution. It will give us more intuition, not as the geometric, it, but it also will give us a iterative way to be able to, to measure this. And he started with this kind of like, what we want to minimize, we want to minimize the distance between the point x, which is, and the image of the point, which is, which is will be kind of like the, uh, the image of the point xi, or uh, sorry, x prime. So this is what we called x ga, like x hat in this case. So if we uh, want to, to measure this, so in the, this is what we call the, the geometric error we want to, dis to, measure, to minimize is the distance error in this case. So if we think about that, this is, if we kind of like bring you back to linear algebra, and do you think about this kind of a variety? And do you want to minimize this value along this variety H? If we take A, write AH as CH of X for simplicity, which is this is what will give us and kind of like approximate this as a polynomial, which is will go between these points, one kind of like approach to try to minimize the error. Now, if we think about Taylor representation of this kind of function, in Taylor representation, we know that we can write the Taylor series, and it's infinite, yes? Taylor representation of a function is, is a polynomial representation of a function which is infinite. But in each like step, like if we decided to stop at a, uh, for example, term k, we can compute the, the error which is bound, the value which is bound the error for the, 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 the rest of the, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, series because we know it's convergent then. So now if we take, this is the, ta the like the uh, computation of the Taylor representation, but only one degree, which is, this is the one degree we have, and this is the residual we will get. Now what we want to kind of minimize, we want to minimize the delta x. This is the error. So if we take the delta x as the error, which is the distance between x and x hat. So if we want to minimize this, we defined delta x as x minus or x hat minus x. And this is, in this case, we, we know that c cell x tag is equal 0. This is what we assumed in the, in the beginning. Now, which is mean that if we say h shell x plus, this is which is the derivative of ch with respect to x multiplied by delta x, which is we get it from the definition of residual of Taylor series, but we take only one, one level approximation or one degree of approximation, which is we take the first one multiple and, and plus the residual of the, the error or the bound of the error. Now, if we take this and define this as a J, just which is more resemble the Jacobian, in this case, we can write this as the 
j delta x. Now, unfortunately, it's not always 0 because it's, this is what we call the error. So the error will give us, which is mean the j delta x will give us minus the error in this case. And so this is at each iteration, we try to minimize this because every time we compute this and kind of like know how to take the j delta x, and this is will give us the, 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 uh, the error. And we know the direction of minimization the error, because this is will be what we call, we took the derivative of the, the delta x. So not, it's pretty much remind us about the kind of more the, uh, the trying in numerical analysis to when we want to try to find a root of a function, which is we all the time try to converge to one of these roots. Pretty much this is a kind of a combination very similar to this technique, because when we try to Gaussian solution for a function, we take the derivative and try to converge toward the root of the function. So this is pretty much very similar in this sense. So, and if we continue with this, just to try and get each iteration, we use to solve, I assume you all know the Lagrange, multi Lagrange multi uh, multipliers. So what we try actually to use, this is pretty much kind of like one of approach to compute this, the direction of the, the, uh, the derivative and try to find the solution for this kind of a function, because eventually be our function is a uh, differential function. And then it's pretty much we take the, La uh, the Lagrange multiplier and then simplify this, because we take the, the derivative. And this is what will give us the, finally, this is the easy solution. We took the j we computed in the, in the previous slide. And here we know that we know that x prime is x hat is x plus delta x. And if we take write the norm as the distance we try to compute, the distance of the error we try to minimize, we split it as, because this is two vectors, as delta x transpose multiplied by delta x. And if we take from the previous slide, this is will be the transpose will be e multiplied by j, or j e. And this is, we take these two, kind of just making this very simple, taking the j in the middle and taking the e and e transpose. And this is what we want to minimize in each stage. So pretty much, we don't, like what we will get, we need only to minimize these values. So this is will give us the Samson measures. It's at each iteration, we, we know the cost. And we not only we can also know how really to, which one, which direction will give us, will, will lead to minimization of this cost. Um, actually, I'm repeating the same slide. Why this is slide supposed to be here? Just, this is a copy from the previous slide. OK, this is the, the algorithm, which is pretty much if we want to kind of take this into the algorithmic approach, which is like, translating all this, this kind of like mathematics into matrices, just pretty much we have the 2D homography x, which is we compute. So we have a point x, y, not that, that we, we kind of like a point x, y, and its corresponding point x prime and y prime. Then we compute the algebraic error just by cx of the x point we have. And then we take Derivat like the derivative, which is will give us in this case two by four matrix, and this is if we t think about this matrix, this is the J one one item of this matrix. It's just if you think about this, is this is what we will get? We we'll take this derivative of this value and make this derive this confirm to x, and this is do you know this is if we take this derivative, we'll get minus W i h two one. If we take the other one, we'll get yi h31, because we actually take the derivative with respect to x. 
And then, which is similar to the algebraic error, we compute the E, which is we get here transpose because these are vectors. And we continue the same. We all like, when we, this is kind of like a, uh, we sum all this error for all points because we have, have the end points we get. So we get one edge, which is we compute and we know the error for this homography. Now, if we want to improve this, we need actually to go for the, each, the, the next iteration. And this is what the, we need at each time to compute the value, which is we need to see or to minimize. And so the, this value will tell us how to improve H for the next iteration. Uh, yes, this is just like a, if someone, I, the, I mentioned the Melanibus distance, which is similar, like one of the metrics to like Manhattan or Euclidean. And this is it's a pretty much this is computed through the multiplication of the points. Take the, take the mean value of your point set and then take the distance between all your point set and the mean value. Compute, a mat multiply this as, write this in a matrix. Multiply this by its transpose matrix. This is what we will go, what we will call the covariance matrix. And this is what you, pretty much what you will get the error. Then you take the uh, solution or the, one option is to take, in order to get this, to take the eigenvalues of these kind of a uh, multiplication of the result matrix will give you the, the distance. So this is pretty much what I, I kind of like done with the, all the theoretical part. And in the next lecture, I will talk about like the image model and single image camera model. Hopefully it will take us, I'll try to kind of like go through the important things in two lectures. And then we'll go for two images, try to also to see the uh, kind of, we can find the correspondence and the match and reconstruct the 3D. And after that, we'll, we'll kind of try to uh, see how many people will be kind of willing to read and to present papers. And based on that, we will continue. OK? So I think if we try to get kind of a seminar where we'll get kind of papers and everyone will get read one paper, if I think we try to get more bigger group, we'll be able to read more papers and just everyone will tell us about the paper, just the important things. So it will not be, maybe we can do it in, in kind of uh, 45 minutes and see if we can keep up with this. Uh, any question? So it's one thing which is I have to mention, I mentioned like earlier also, I'm trying kind of to repeat this. It, things look like, things kind of look complicated. And it's, it's, it's not. It's the, the fact that we are using kind of symbol of matrices and vectors and multiplication of these things, which is sometimes give us the illusion that these, these are big things. But if you look at these, all the matrices we are talking about, at most like four by three by three, or we have the matrix which is maybe eight by two, but this is in a scalar level. So it's, they are not really big matrices. So even when you are trying to plug them into any kind of silver, or even kind of try to work these things by hand, they are not complicated. And all what we looked through is, pretty much multiplication of vectors and matrices and derivative of values, which is not really, nothing, doesn't seem to be complicated things. Maybe you need to refresh your memories about these things. So the only thing which is maybe kind of like, is kind of like when you're looking at the, the tour, like the Taylor like series, how you take a function and write it as a, as a kind of like a uh, series of like polynomial, like representation polynomial component. And then you try to limit your error. So pretty much this is the part of Taylor theorem, 
that if you stop at sequence at the item k or like x to the power of k, you can always compute the error which is bound the remaining of the, 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 the sequence. So this is what you want to, uh, and if you bound that, you can bound the error. So pretty much the Simpson error is, is based on uh, kind of like try to simplify the algebraic error using this approximation. So it's an approximate error, but it has been used because it's somehow, it's not as intuitive as the geometric error, but it's simple to compute, pretty much a little bit harder than the algebraic, but the, but kind of like provide a better solution than the algebra. Any question? Okay, so if you have any question, just feel free to just to drop by and ask or discuss whatever you like or don't understand. And,